Right now we're out here at the Penguin Ranch. We've set up this campsite on McMurdo Sound. So we're on the sea ice right now, on top of about 500 meters of water. The sea ice here is about seven feet thick. I'm Jessica Meir. I'm a graduate student at the Scripps Institution of Oceanography, and I work in Paul Ponganis' lab. We study the diving physiology of marine mammals and birds. So we like to focus on animals that can dive really well. Down here in the Antarctic, we study the emperor penguin because they're the best diver among any bird. One of the main things that we focus on is oxygen depletion during diving. We want to try to understand how these animals can hold their breath for so long. They can stay underwater for a long time. They're air breathers just like we are. They take a breath before they go down and they need to use that oxygen the entire time. So we like to see how they can manage their oxygen stores and accomplish the kinds of dives that they do. Oxygen is transported throughout the body through the blood. So that's one of the things that I was looking at, how the oxygen is utilized from the blood, what low levels they can tolerate, and also how quickly that oxygen is used. Emperor penguins are the best diver of any other bird. They can dive deeper and they can dive longer than any other bird. They can tolerate extremely low levels of oxygen. Humans would be unconscious at levels far above this, and most terrestrial, most other animals on Earth as well. But these diving animals are capable of withstanding these really low levels of oxygen. What that means, it makes them better divers. They can hold their breath for longer. They can utilize all the oxygen that's there and still stay underwater for longer if they need to catch some more fish or whatever they need to do. One of the things about doing a PhD in something like marine biology, in whatever topic you're actually pursuing, is there usually is a lot of exotic field work involved. And that, for me, is the best part, the field work. You're going somewhere, immersing yourself in the whole situation, collecting the data, working with the animals. That's the thing that I really like the best, especially working in the Antarctic, because there are so many things involved. You know, there's a lot of manual labor involved. There's a lot of things that you have to do just to set up your research site. We're out there shoveling or ice picking or clearing the holes. And I really like that, being able to spend a lot of time outside and the physical exertion it requires. It really completes the picture for me. Um, then you get to work with these incredible animals. We're so fortunate to be able to work with something like an emperor penguin. And the science that we're getting out of it, to me, is one of the you know, most interesting things I could be doing. So it all really comes full circle. My background was a little bit different. I'm new to marine biology when I started my PhD. I've always had an interest in physiology. I used to study human physiology in another extreme environment, not the Antarctic, but the extreme environment of space. I used to work at NASA and I studied the human physiology of astronauts there. So there we were looking at basically how space flight and microgravity may affect the body. This is my fourth time down here on the ice and it's equally amazing every time. But of course the first time is really the most breathtaking. I had an amazing first year. I got to do some amazing things and go to a lot of really cool places down here. I dove under the ice, went diving under the ice for the first time, and that was amazing. Diving down here, especially if you have the penguins around you or the Waddell seals come by, it's really, really breathtaking. Even just going down there and looking back up at the ice with the light coming through, it's really an incredible experience. 